Welcome back to another episode of the Open Source Cafe, and today we're talking about open source and open source programs. Uh, that is Google Summer of Code, which is coming up uh, shortly. So before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Logan. Logan, thanks a lot for joining and welcome back to the channel. Uh, would you like to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, sure, Kunal. Uh, glad to be back. It's always fun. Open Source Cafe is the is the best place to hang out. Um, uh, so my name is Logan Kilpatrick. I'm the community manager for the Julia programming language. Um, and then also as part of that role, I've been an admin mentor for Google Summer of Code, Google Season of Docs for the last few years as well. Awesome. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kunal. I've been involved in DSOC uh, thrice. So I was a student in my freshman year. And then I mentored twice uh, with Red Hat uh, Middleware. Um, so if you want to check out my project, it's available on my GitHub. You can check it out. Cool. So we're talking about open source and Google Summer of Code and stuff today. One thing I would highly like to, you know, a, a little bit of a disclaimer, just uh, actions are, are really more valuable than uh, words when it comes to open source. Uh, anyone can, like, you can all spend our hours and hours in giving you motivation and stuff, but until and unless you get involved, it's it's not going to happen. So what is this video about? This 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 episode is about uh, like sharing about Google Summer of Code and not just the things that you will find online, right? So all the things like uh, what is the process like, what is the timeline, it's all available on the website. Here, we are going to make sure like we are sharing our experiences and some of our tips because Ali Logan has worked as an ad admin I worked as a mentor, so we know how like the, the procedure happens and what organizations are looking for, basically. So let's, let's dive straight into it. Uh, before we jump into like uh, Google Summer of Code, Logan, would you like to give a brief about uh, like what is open source in general? Yeah, sure. So for, for folks who don't know a lot about open source, the general idea is people take some sort of software uh, project that they've written, they put it online on a platform like GitHub, um, and anyone in the world can see that code and also potentially use it, make changes to it, um, and, and really sort of spawn a community around some specific piece of software. Um, and it sounds really nerdy, but it's a, it's a ton of fun. And um, it's, you know, there, there's so many different sub communities within the open source community building all types of stuff. There's things I'm built for the cloud through the Cloud Native Foundation. And there's, you know, more programming language specific things. So you can really do anything. And there's a huge, there's a whole host of, of different types of projects available. Now, I'm always advocating for learning in public for developers. And that's why I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Showcase. Showcase is a network built for developers to connect, build communities, and find new job opportunities. So I was able to create my showcase profile in a matter of few minutes, and it's a really amazing front page for the tech community. So here you can see information about me, all the social links, about myself, the tech stack that I'm familiar with, and I really enjoy how it categorizes it accordingly. You can also see the positions I'm working on and uh, the credentials. So I had fun speaking at KubeCon and Open Source Summit. You can verify the credentials over here. You can see the repositories that I'm currently active with. You can also check out the platform in dark mode by pressing the display toggle button. They can find communities like JavaScript, blogging as a developer and React, and they can use their profiles to gain access to new job opportunities. For content creators, you can make money on Showcase by turning on member subscriptions and putting your content behind the paywall. You can use the invite code join Kunal and check out the links in the description to get started today. Yeah, when I actually did a video on how to find projects in your specific domain. So people keep asking Kunal, suggest web development projects, Android projects. No, I'm not going to do that. I've already explained to you how to find projects. So you can do it on your own now, right? So there's an open source playlist on my channel. You can check it out. Uh, I've shared some resources about how you can find projects. Um, but yeah, and let's talk a little bit more about uh, in brief, like uh, why contributing is important. So since we're talking about Google Sum of Code, obviously we're talking about like people who are new. Uh, because, uh, you know, even uh, professionals and employees, they contribute to open source as well. Reason for them being like a lot of times they get paid. Uh, a lot of companies utilize these open source projects and it's like the job of people to like literally contribute to open source. For example, uh, these are like literally like open source uh, contributors and advocates. These are like proper job descriptions at companies, you know, like Red Hat and stuff. So uh, companies basically benefit a lot from open source software. For example, take Linux, for example, or Kubernetes. So if you take, if you check out Kubernetes maintainers and stuff, they work uh, you know, full time at uh, Red Hat, VMware, Google, and all these other big tech companies. So if these companies are making use of these open source projects, it makes sense that they put their like uh, you know uh, employees uh, to help out as well. 
but logan uh, can you tell us a little bit more about like why contributing is important like when someone is just getting started out yeah i, I think this is a great question i think um it, it's really there's a whole host of different answers i think the most compelling for me is that it it really you have this public track record of contributions. If you go into an interview somewhere, um, you can actually go and point them to your GitHub profile, point them to some specific pull request you've made, and they can say, wow, this person has actually done the work. They know what they're doing. Uh, you you learn a ton, meet a bunch of different people all over the world. I'm to, me, me and Kunal have never met in real life, but open source has, has brought us together. We've made videos, we've chatted. Um, so it, it's such a cool and, and unique experience. And I think uh, an awesome opportunity to push your career forward. Yeah, this is a proof of work and so many opportunities you'll get. And by the way, we're not talking about like Google Soft Code right now. We're just talking pure open source. Like if you want to start right now, you will get these benefits. So yeah, networking with people, you get to test your skills, build your resume, get job opportunities and internships. And that's totally fine as well. Like if you're getting an opportunity via open source, there's even more reasons to contribute now. Cool. Now let's talk about Google Summer of Code. Uh, so what is GSOC? Yeah, Google Summer of Code is a, a program that's put on by Google every year, as one might assume, um, which, which pairs open source projects with potential contributors. Um, so Google provides basically the infrastructure, the money to support individuals who want to contribute to open source um, and pairs them up with open source projects. Um, so open source projects basically put out a list of, of different things that they need help with, and then individuals can go and read through all the different projects, read through all the different potential projects within the um, within the larger organization and find things that they're interested in. And again, it's an opportunity for, for you to go and contribute to open source, meet new people, all those things as, as part of that Google Summer of Code experience. It's basically just open source that you're getting paid for by Google, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And like Logan mentioned, Google is just providing the infrastructure. You're not going to be working for Google. You're not going to be an intern at Google. People keep putting this on LinkedIn. I was an intern at Google at Google Summer of Code. Uh, when I was a mentor, Google actually sent out an email, like, please don't do this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you're not an intern at Google. You're not going to be working for Google. Google is just providing a platform. You'll be working with the organizations, which we'll talk more about later. So what happens is that organizations, open source organizations, they apply to Google. Google selects them. And then students, or now it's not just for students, it's basically open to all. Uh, they apply to these organizations. Now your evaluations, you get selected or rejected, your work evaluations, what tasks are assigned to you. Everything will happen between you and the organization and not you and Google. Google will just provide you a certificate and a, and a nice little uh, uh, stipend, for example. So let, let, let's think about it a little bit. I think. I think that is it. Is there anything else that GSOC provides other than this thing that just regular contributions don't? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't. A platform, a much more streamlined, like a, a, a an organized way of contributing because then you are bound to a particular project because you're getting paid for it, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, the big the... is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, there's the accountability aspect of it aspect yeah. of it too. I think when you normally contribute to open source, there's sort of yeah. no one there to sort of holding yeah. anything over you if you just walk yeah. away and it's don't not, do anything. It's not a give or take relationship. Exactly. When it comes to like just contributing to open source. I believe like when students may ask, okay, that's fine. But why did Google start Google Summer of Code? I think the, the, the main reason is to get more folks involved in the community. So it's not about getting selected. It's about staying with the organization after the GSOC period is over. So if you're, if you're the kind of person who is just going to contribute during the GSOC period, and if the organization finds out that this is your motive, you will get rejected. They will not select you. So the organizations are looking for folks who will stay with them after the GSOC period is over. Logan, what do you think? Yeah, 100%. And it's usually, again, the, the correlation is people who are there before Google Summer of Code are, tend to be the yeah. people who are there afterwards, which is a, oh. one of the telltale signs for organizations when they're choosing people um, and, yeah. and whittling it down. Cool. And if you want to learn more about it, check out the links in the description. I'll link some blogs that I wrote and uh, some of the videos I created. But let's talk a little bit more about the changes that are in 2022 for starting from next year. Uh, they made some changes last year as well. Project size were reduced to half. Stipend was reduced to half. Now I believe it's pretty flexible. I think it provides both part-time and full-time. And uh, the main change right now is that uh, not just students can apply. Like even working professionals can apply. You just have to be 18 years above. Yep. 
And there's also, I think they sort of reverted back to now there's flexibility in the actual project size as well. So you can do a medium sized project, yeah. which is the same as last year, or a large size project, which is the same mm -hmm. as two years ago. So there's a difference in the number of hours that you'll end up working. Yeah, cool. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about the changes. Uh, pretty uh, pretty standard stuff. You can check out the you know, link in the description. But uh, let's talk about the timeline, uh, what the timeline is like. And then we'll also move forward with uh, like sharing our experiences and some tips. Uh, Logan, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. So I, I think it everything, uh, it, the website has the the full timeline and the actual dates for 2022 haven't been released yet. I was I was looking earlier, but the high level for from a student's perspective is um, the organization application or the organizations that are selected will go live. Um, and when those organizations go live, um, the projects actually will be available as well. Um, so then there'll be sort of the, the time period where students go through, look through all the projects, find one that they're actually interested in. Um, during that time, the most important thing that students need to do is find projects um, and find an actual specific mentor. The mentor of the project is your advocate during the entire Google Summer of Code process. If you don't have a mentor who is looking out for you, you're not going to be successful during Google Summer of Code. So you need that person. Um, and, and there's really a, a burden on you as the, as the contributor to make sure that that person, um, that you're sort of maintaining a good relationship with them, that you're not spamming them that you're treating them with respect they're doing this for free they're you know they have a job they're maintaining open source software so this is an additional thing on their plate um so again really treat that person with respect be kind to them um because they're they're taking a lot out of their life to do this yeah this reminds me of a question i get asked a lot they people ask uh, like hey if the organizations are being released so late and projects are being announced so late and you expect us to contribute beforehand like how can we contribute when we don't know the projects are released? That, that's a really good question. I think the history tends to, it doesn't repeat mm -hmm. itself, but it rhymes. Um, yeah. And you, you if, if an organization was in Google Summer of Code last year, there's a strong probability that they're going to be in it this year. The other thing mm -hmm. to do is, is just ask. You can reach out just to ask. projects mm -hmm. and be like, hey, you know, I saw you did Google Summer of Code last year. Are you are you all planning to apply again this year? If so, like I'm interested in these projects and, and go reach out to a mentor. Um, so you, you're welcome yeah. to do that ahead of time. And, and I know organizations don't tend to just drop off the face of the earth, mm -hmm. especially if they had a yeah. strong showing. If they had 10 projects yeah. last year, there's a good chance mm -hmm. they're going to be around this year as well. Yeah. One thing I'd like to share, like a disclaimer here, is that um, it has been in many cases, I have witnessed it myself. Sometimes people spend their months contributing to a project and that project itself does not get selected in GSOC. So that can happen as well, but don't get demotivated because you contributed, you put in the efforts and all these months. So all the work you did is already available on GitHub and you've already like made significant progress, if not Google Summer of Code. So don't worry much about it. Yeah, Kunal, I have a question for you actually. When you applied to Google Summer of Code the first time, were you did you only apply for one? Because I know Google gives you the opportunity to apply yeah, for multiple three. projects, I think. Yeah, um, I applied to just one organization and I applied to two projects in that organization. Both were right. related. Uh, the one was a Fabricate Maven plugin and one was a Kubernetes Java client. So uh, I actually got to know about Google Summer of Code after I started contributing. So I was just looking for projects to contribute to to gain my, like build my resume or whatever because I was at an event. And in that event, they were talking about open source. So then I started contributing and then the people who were helping me contribute, they were like, hey, uh, we are starting out with uh, you know, Google Summer of Code. I'm like, what is that? Then I looked into it and then I started contributing. So initially, like I started with contributions and the contributions were very silly. Uh, I, my first contribution was just delete a file. That's it. Uh, <laughs> that was the contribution. Not even writing anything or removing anything. Just delete the entire file. That's the contribution. So... <laughs> Uh, it was a valid contribution, but uh, people often start with like documentation. You can start with test cases, providing examples, and then develop like with good first issues and things like that. So that's yeah. like the entire process, like Logan mentioned. Yeah. And, and I think the the important thing to take away from this is, and I've seen this as well when we did the the Julia community when we sort of had our wrap up last year um, and and talked to all the students. It was the same exact trend, asking the the nine students who were there on the call, "Hey, how many organizations did you apply to?" 
they all mm -hmm. applied to one organization and, and those were the students that were selected. So I, I think applying for multiple projects potentially within the same organization is a great option, but really I would try to focus on on one organization, get those relationships, get involved in the community. That's uh, that's again how you're gonna yeah. you're gonna increase your, the chances. Your chances won't increase if you apply to multiple orgs because yeah, so just, uh, like the competition is a lot, and you won't be able to give your hundred percent in one. Then, all right. Uh, now let's talk about the um, you know. Um, application process itself so you have to create a proposal so we mentioned like you apply to the organizations in order to apply you have to submit a proposal uh proposal is important but uh if you have no let's talk about let's give some tips first right what all things people need to do before contributing Logan. yeah I, I think again the biggest thing is organizations it's a it's a risk for them in two ways. One, when you give someone a Google Summer of Code slot, you're you're basically taking that slot away from somebody else. So they're taking the risk that you're the right student to give it to. Um, but it's also a it's an investment from the organization. Like again, as we mentioned before, it takes time for them to mentor you. They want to make sure that you're you're serious about this. Um, so mm -hmm. getting involved beforehand, making the contributions. I think something that I see a lot is people who have made you know, really, really, really small surface level contributions um, within a community, but it's not it's not a hundred percent clear whether or not that person like has the the technical experience perhaps to actually go through with the project. So I think if you're if you're contributing to projects and let's say you don't have enough time to go and make some you know huge pull request with all these new features and you're just doing really small things, I think. You, you, you need to show both sort of a commitment to the community and the and the ecosystem as well as that you have the technical background to actually do the project so it's a it's a two-part thing um, if, if you don't have you know deep open source contributions uh, to show folks this video is sponsored by teleport enabling engineers to quickly unify access to any computing resource anywhere on the planet Check out the links in the description below to get started. Are you juggling with shared secrets, SSH keys, or hopping between VPNs and multiple access points? Check out Teleport to quickly access your computing resources from anywhere. Teleport allows engineers and security professionals to unify access for SSH servers, Kubernetes clusters, web applications, and databases across all environments. With a unified resource catalog, there is no need to maintain inventories. You can also work together to troubleshoot a problem with your colleagues on a remote server or on each other's laptops and record these sessions as well using shared sessions. Teleport also provides ready-to-use auth for your internal web applications. Easily implement security and compliance with Teleport to adopt industry best practices for access across all protocols and all environments with minimal configuration. How does it work? Teleport is a single binary which enables secure access to SSH nodes, Kubernetes clusters, web apps, and databases. Deployed as a single binary, it seamlessly integrates with the rest of your stack. Get started with Teleport now and try it for free. Check out the links in the description below for more information. Yeah, totally agree with that. So that's tip number one, which is uh, start contributing early. We often say it's never too late. So the way I look at it is if you start contributing very late for that year, then it's you're starting contributing early for next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 100%. So that's sort of like what I did because I was applying in my freshman year and uh, I had this, people often try to overhype things. So I heard in, in India, by the way, Logan, you might know this. Uh, Google Summer Code is very popular because you might have seen the stats. Indian students, this much. Then US is like this much and then all these other companies. So Google yep. Summer Code releases stats every year, number of students. So I think around 1,200 people apply and 600, 700 are from India. Reason being, it's the money is pretty good as compared to what Indian students get in in, in companies and internships. So it helps them. Plus uh, the competition here in India is a lot. So one thing that I have, uh, I was also had this in mind that it was a very tough thing to do. But when I actually started contributing and stuff, it was and, and then I was like, okay, I'm in my freshman year and my seniors have told me that it's a really tough thing to do. So I'll just contribute and then I'll get selected next year. Fortunately, I got selected in freshman year itself, and uh, that's where like my uh, the th third, the second and third tip comes in, which is don't worry about getting selected. Just worry about being a good open source contributor. And uh, the third tip is 
you can try to pick a difficult project if you definitely want to do Google Summer of Code, <laughs> because uh, it was one of the best decisions of my life picking up a contributing uh, like a difficult projects that I thought was at the time uh, Kubernetes Java client because with more people applying to a single project, there's obviously more con competition, right? Uh, because Google only provides a handful of slots to the organization. They cannot hire every, they cannot like not hire, hire is the wrong word. They cannot select everyone. So if you select, if you contribute to a project that is like a little bit difficult, only handful of students are contributing to it, then the chances get increased. That's sort of like what happened with me. And I'm so glad I contributed to it because then I got involved in Kubernetes and Cloud Native Computing Foundation and stuff. So uh, that's one tip. Uh, it's up to you. And it's also a challenge. You'll learn some nice things. Logan, what do you think about that? Yeah, I agree completely. And the, the piece that I'll add on as far as picking projects is that if I would also look at it from an organization standpoint, like an organization mm -hmm. like uh, I'm sure TensorFlow, if folks don't mm -hmm. know, it's Google's machine learning framework, things like that, like that are super mm -hmm. high profile projects, lots and lots of contributors. Again, even if the project itself is difficult, there's just so many more people who know what TensorFlow is versus if you pick some random open source project that nobody's ever heard of, uh, perhaps again, there's, yeah. there's less folks who are you're going to be competing against for a specific allocation on that yeah. in that organization. It's also good in terms of if you get rejected, because if you get rejected, you still are a contributor in a very well-known open source project. Rather than because I have seen organizations who whose motive is just Google Summer of Code. Organizations like that are also available in GSOC. Sure. And I would not recommend going for those because you will get into Google Summer of Code, but you will not get the essence of open source, which is community and collaboration and contributing to projects being used by people around the world. So many things that you can get out of it. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah, it's a balancing um, act. I think just trying to figure out sort of where's the right mm -hmm. the right place between all these different things. Yeah, cool. And uh, one last thing, which is uh, the the collaboration mindset, even in Google Summer of Code, rather than competition. Uh, Logan would like to add on to that. Yeah, I think it's you know lifting other people up in open source. Mm -hmm. People see that. People see when you're when you're you know, not doing things for yourself. I think that's the essence of open source is you're, you're sort of building something that's bigger than yourself. Um, so I think it, it's not a competition in open source. Uh, you can help other people that that actually makes you stronger as a, as a candidate as you go through the process. So definitely yeah. keep that mindset. Um, the other people in the community, even if they're students applying for Google Summer of Code, those are your allies um, and, and you all are working towards the same goal together. Yeah, and the thing is that... Uh... They're looking for such people if they get a hint of because people have this mindset that uh, if I help this person during this contribution or whatever, then they'll make a PR and they will get selected in GSOC. So if you have that sort of a mindset, you I'm pretty sure you won't get selected. Or even if you do, you won't be like successful in that organization because they're looking for collaborative mindset. Other than that, like Logan mentioned, if you help them in public, then maintainers will see like, okay, this person is really helpful and your chances will get increased. So have a collaborative mindset rather than competition. And those are some some of the nice tips that you can use uh, going forward. Cool. And let's talk a little bit more about the application, like the proposal itself. Logan, do you have any tips about like proposals? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. I think one of the one of the things that I see folks do a lot is is actually go through sort of an iterative process on this proposal. So once you have sort of an initial version of your proposal set up, um, it's totally okay to to send that over to a mentor and say, "Hey, here's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, does this sort of align with your expectations as far as what I would do during the summer? Do, do I have the right technical pieces there? Um, and, and also, and we do this in the Julia community." getting feedback from other Google Summer of Code students also is an mm -hmm. awesome opportunity. If, if other people read it and they're like, hey, I think you're probably missing this one thing that you know, mm -hmm. we all have, or you know, you're doing something really great that maybe we should include, that's possible. Collaborate with other students and, and get feedback from the mentors and other people in the community. It doesn't just have to be, again, there's you know, open source is a burden on these maintainers and these mentors. So if your mentor is really strapped for time, Go and get feedback from other people who contribute to the project. That's totally okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing that I would like to mention here is because people make this mistake, please don't send in your proposal for review one day before the deadline. Uh, send yep. it as early, <laughs> send it as early as possible. Other than that, uh, your your proposal should tell the mentor that okay, this person knows what they're doing and they will be a successful Google Summer of Course student. So uh, prior contributions help. Links to previous uh, contributions help. 
your skill set or whatever that's totally fine but the main part in the proposal is like the timeline so let me share my proposal that by the way don't copy it because every proposal is a uh, project specific so if you copy you will get rejected um, you can definitely find templates uh, from your own organization or whatever uh, but projects are template uh, the the proposals are template specific organization specific let me just uh, let me just share mine real quick so this is basically about it just a little bit about the project uh, repository link why did you choose this project so here you can see that i have just mentioned about the project and i have mentioned about my experiences and uh, i have also mentioned that i've been working with containers and whatever so because the maintainers know because they have been contributing with like i have been contributing with them and stuff this is a title and stuff because of the task at hand so adding support for missing resources and some testing and uh, this is an abstract that okay this 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 thing was missing like these resources were missing in the kates client and these did not have test coverage and uh, this is the timeline i was talking about so basically pre gsoc period i will do this from this time to this time i will do this this is not concrete it's not like you have to definitely follow this uh, i i wrapped up this entire thing in just uh, under a month and a half or something like that and uh, <clears throat> for rest of that weeks i was able to contribute to some other things that they shared with me so uh, this is not like concrete it's just a general understanding and it can go above and up or down depending on your uh, how your communications are with your mentors so that's that's about it and uh, have you made any prior contributions you can mention any links uh, do you plan on contributing to after gsoc yes i do why should you choose me i want to highlight this because here i would not recommend you to put something like uh, i'm very motivated and i i code 12 hours a day and i'm like the awesome and i'm the best no <laughs> don't put soft skills here uh, try to put like uh, <clears throat> things that have proof of concept so you can put things like i'm well familiar with these technologies i have contributed to this project before and i have i'm familiar with the issues that are being created for google summer of code that's much more valuable than just you know motivational stuff so other than that just your open source experience and uh, contact information and your skill set and all these other things that's it but again it's a very uh, organization specific and uh, if you don't have prior contributions or whatever it does not matter how strong your proposal is the chances of someone else who may have a lower quality of proposal but higher quality in contributions they will be preferred because when we actually select students we give them marks on the gsoc platform uh and the marks are like three there are three things i think which is like one is the proposal and one is the previous contributions and one is like the engagement with the community or whatever so proposal is just like one third of the thing no i totally agree i think the proposal that you shared is is excellent it hits on the head on the timeline aspect of things the the mm. timeline is really there to show the maintainers and the mentors that you've actually thought about what it looks like to solve this problem whatever the problem is that your project is is about the the proposal is just like the step by step mm. of how you're going to do it it's the the actual dates don't matter it's really mm. like the pieces and the different steps that you're going to go through as you solve this problem yeah so make sure like you just have something to showcase and uh, just contributions are if if there's one thing you should get out of this session is contribute that's that's the that's what's going to get you in or out uh so one last thing i would like to you know we'd like to talk about is uh, what if you don't get selected so first thing is like uh, don't get demotivated apply next year and now you can even even apply like uh, without uh, you know being a student um not getting selected does not mean you're not good enough it may it, it many times may mean that google did not provide enough slots to the organization so uh, logan i i mean i believe you might have seen this as well people who don't get selected because of this reason like they were deserving but google did not provide enough slots organizations start their own program yeah 100% they, we we have our own yeah. program we've we've run into this problem ourselves every single year consistently hmm. we say we need this number of slots cuz there's great proposals google gives us less and and over the years we've been like okay well we don't want to lose these awesome students um so we we now provide the funding uh as the julia community to actually fund students to do the projects for the summer and it's awesome i think it's it's worked i think last year we had like 15 students or something like that that we independently funded um because the proposals were awesome and google didn't give us enough slots so there's there's more opportunities yeah. and i would also say again there's opportunities if 
to contribute and get paid that that sort of go beyond the scope of of Google's summer of code. I think maybe it's Google season of docs. Maybe it's again some additional uh, program that is actually. Community... I mean, I have a solution for this as well. I made a video on twenty plus open source internships and paid programs you can apply to MLS fellowship, uh, Linux Foundation mentorship programs, Outreachy Google season of docs, uh, the the kernel mentorship program, Hyperledger has its own program. There's, there's like twenty plus, and I made a video on that. So check it out. 100%. Yeah, I think that's the that's the mentality you have to have. If it doesn't work out this round, it's next round or it's another one of those programs where you have to keep the the contribution process uh going yeah. as you as you progress. Yeah. Cool. And that was it. Uh I'm not sure if we missed out on anything and uh, as always, uh, if you don't start contributing and if you don't like work on like work on it yourself, it it's not going to matter much. What we have offered is just like 1% of your journey. Rest everything you have to do yourself, but you're not alone. Uh, your maintainers will help you. The community that you get involved in will help you because if they talk, if they're taking part in Google Summer of Code, they are looking for new contributors. So irrespective of whether you contribute via GSOC or not, they will help you. So just join the mailing list, uh, ask good questions, and I've made a video on this already, like how to actually start contributing. So check that out. But uh, thanks a lot for joining, Logan, and I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you again on the channel soon. This is awesome.